Over the last decade, I have reviewed, ranted, roasted, etc. hundreds of films on this channel. And on occasion, I kind of am off the beaten path from what the majority of people think. On Rotten Tomatoes, typically I'm pretty on. I'd say 90% of the time, I align with a lot of the other critics. If a movie's fresh, I'm kind of there with it. But on occasion, I veer off, I'm separate. And one movie in particular came out last year where not only was I against what most people thought, I was damn near the only one on a, on a hill dying alone. And that film is Godzilla Minus One, a movie I said I would revisit down the road with my family to see what they thought and how I felt a second time through. And I have to tell you, this is one of the very, very rare instances where I can admit I was wrong. It's kind of with a heavy heart that I say this because I know a lot of people out there were very supportive when I put out my Godzilla Minus One review and said, Adam, stay the course, you keep being honest, you keep being true to yourself, and we'll stay with you. Regardless of what you say, regardless of if we don't agree 80% of the time, I still appreciate your passion, your honesty, and trying to have a fun, light conversation. That wasn't the case with Godzilla Minus One to others, though. I had thousands, literally thousands, of angry comments, tweets, Instagram private messages. Someone actually sent me a photo of their literal shit in the toilet, which was disgusting, and you should probably seek medical attention immediately. But besides that, I still didn't bend the knee. I still didn't back off of my opinions on the film at the time. Because they were mine. What, what does it matter at the end of the day? I understand if you've been watching me for a while and you, I, for some reason, respect what I have to say. And then I, I do something so polarizing, so different from what you thought and from the norm that it almost pisses you off to a point where you think, He's either selling out, he's doing some sort of a shill thing, he's trying to go against the trend so that he can stand out on YouTube or Rotten Tomatoes. And I guess to an extent, I kind of see your point because I was so far off from everyone else at the time. Granted, at the time, there were eight or nine reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't need to beat a dead lizard on this. If you're new to the channel and you don't know what I'm talking about though, there's videos on here that go over it, but basically, I did not like Godzilla Minus One. Didn't think it was really a big deal that I didn't like it. I put out a lengthy review, kind of bashing it, bitching about how it wasted my time. It was slow. It, it focused on the drama that I didn't think worked for me. It was cartoonish. It was almost anime style in approach. And that just wasn't, it wasn't it. It wasn't it. And uh, people were mad. They were upset. And uh, I got a lot of blowback from it. And then that, that's it. I've kind of moved on. But, you know, we're in 2024 now. I still get reminders on the daily that I had a terrible review. And I, I thought, all right, now's the time. Let me watch it with my family. Let me see what they say. I will rewatch this with an open mind and an open heart and open legs. And we'll see if I'm penetrated by the performance Godzilla and fam bring to the table. And, um, you know, before I get to that, I just want to point out that it, it's it's super rare. I think I've changed my opinion on maybe three movies in total in my life. The only one that actually comes to mind is Castaway, a film that when it came out, I was a teenager and I just didn't really like the ending and I didn't like the choices made. But life lessons, changes in thought process over the years and just how you felt going into the movie can affect it. And I watched Castaway a couple years back with my son and I freaking loved the movie. And I actually thought the ending was super strong and one of the best parts. Because again, I'm at a different place in life. And movies, music, books, it all it's all going to hit you differently depending on where you're coming from and what your mindset is going in. And so going into Godzilla Minus One, I, I was actually very excited for the film. But maybe I was thinking at the time, this is going to be a big blockbuster movie that's going to have great effects and some really, I mean, not great effects, but a lot of Godzilla on display and the humans will be fine and it just didn't work. But now going in a second time with the knowledge I have that it's a character drama and Godzilla is a background character and more a symbol, this creature is more symbolic to the events after D-Day, it, it takes on a different weight. I look at it in a different light. The other thing I would like to point out is critics are not like some magical special type of creature that doesn't get it wrong ever. 
if you look at athletes, they have bad games, they can get in slumps. You look at writers, they get writer's block. And the same, of course, goes for movie criticism. You can be completely off base. You might miss the point of the film. You're not above that. You're not above criticism yourself. And that's fair. But because the nature of the beast is so disgusting now, on the internet, you have to have these salacious thumbnails, like you, you looking stupid, reacting to something in such an appalling way, giving these polarizing opinions, and then the reactions are the same. This guy didn't like what I liked, so I'm gonna freaking take my fan base and we're gonna go after him. We're gonna send him death threats, we're gonna send him disgusting photos, tell him to kill himself, all that stuff. It's so over the top and ridiculous, and you're, you're, you're rewarded for it. People are rewarded for acting like trash bags. Oh, look it, I told this guy to jump off a bridge, and my followers think that that's edgy, or new people see this and they think I'm edgy, so they follow me and now I got some clout. Or this YouTube critic put out a terrible review of a movie, so we're gonna pay attention to him just because he's so different than everyone else. That was never the intention. I can say it a million times over, people will choose to believe it or not, but it's just kind of crazy because, again, at the time, there was almost no reviews for the movie. I don't typically get to see movies early. It was one of the rare times when it just happened to be playing in a sneak peek and I was excited for it, so I went and watched it. That was it. The, the, thing, the stars aligned, I guess, or maybe they didn't align in my favor because of the hate. Overall, though, net positive on the video, more subscribers came than left. So the phrase, all press is good press, kind of rings true. Even the bad press I got in blogs and on other movie channels it ended up giving me some more subscribers. That's the sad takeaway from all of this, and that's why you see other channels continue to do that. I'm gonna keep making outrageous claims on videos that don't really have any merit, but I'm putting it out there over and over again because I know I'm gonna drive in more traffic. I'm gonna put out hateful tweets or these salacious tweets that might not hold any water or have real meaning behind them, but they're gonna get eyes in front of them, and that's all that matters really at the end of the day. And Again, it's rewarded. YouTube doesn't know how to categorize a guy that says, the movie was fine, the movie was okay, but YouTube's algorithm knows absolutely how to do ones and zeros. This movie was hot trash. This movie was perfect. And this is setting a new standard for people trying to make it in the industry. You are rewarded for that kind of behavior. So if you're a new critic or a new really anything, an influencer online, you can't be down the middle. You can't be looking things from different lenses. You have to just be, I hate this or I love this and that's that. And the other thing is the hate that comes in from these type of reviews isn't really in good nature either. These people don't have your best interests or theirs in mind. It really, at the end of the day, is just owning someone. Striking a point in your favor, uh, knocking them down a peg, because they don't care if I actually liked the movie. Most of them didn't know who I was at the time. They just wanted to be pissed off and outraged and get some clout, like I stated. And they might be thinking I'm doing the same thing. Again, I, there's no way to change their minds. But at the end of the day, a review is put out it's one that I stood behind, but now that I got to rewatch the film with open eyes and an open heart, yeah, I get it. I get I get why people were mad at me. I think that the criticisms were fair. I think that I'm kind of just a buffoon and an idiot, and I don't deserve to be a, a, a Rotten Tomatoes critic. I should have probably closed down the channel, if I could be frank with you. I probably should have shut the whole thing down, threw the key away, uh, just lit the match and burned it all to the ground. Because even though I've put out thousands of videos at this point that are typically trying to be entertaining and engaging, this one video alone discredits everything. It's really the cock that broke the porn star's back. That's the expression for sure. And here we are, you know, uh, I'm coming at you with this video with a apology. I'm really hoping you embrace me this time around. I know I got it wrong a couple times last year. I think The Sound of Freedom came out in 2023. That was another movie where I just was out of touch with the mainstream audience. I didn't get it. I was kind of knocking the film for some of the production values and the story being kind of all over the place and it being too long and too slow and not understanding it's about the message. It's about the core message, which, which is that child trafficking is wrong. Something that most people didn't really know was wrong until they watched that movie. They were like, hey, what's child trafficking? I don't know what that is. It's never talked about. But then Sound of Freedom came out. It was like, hey, child trafficking's bad and it's happening. And everyone was like, oh, wow, what? This is 
really? Wow, this is crazy. Well, thank you, movie, for telling me this. I didn't know. I don't have any critical thinking skills. Um, so it's great when a movie can come out and say that for me because I'm a fucking idiot. And so Sound of Freedom was really a perfect film for that. It really did open a lot of eyes to, to what's happening uh, in a different country that's not America, but people thought it was because they didn't see the movie. And I was wrong for not really liking the film. Uh, I should have liked it because of the message. Just like you should like every movie about the Holocaust. Just like you should like every movie about animal torture. Just like you should like every movie about child abduction or kidnapping or rape or murder or everything in general. Anything that's horrible... You should like the movie because it's for a good cause. It's opening up your mind. When Liam Neeson's daughter was taken in the film Taken, and then someone else was taken and taken too, and then in the third one, I loved all those movies because someone was taken, and Liam opened my eyes to say, hey, that's wrong that that's happening. I think that was trafficking as well, but we don't count that. Sound of Freedom did it first. And that was important. And, and Sally Field, whenever a kid was taken in one of those Hallmark movies or Lifetime movies, I, I love all of those too because it's it's an important message. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. We don't, we don't need to look at movies for anything other than their messages. Now, if I'm starting to lose you, uh, probably at the 10-minute mark, hopefully, I'm really trying to pad this out with really saying nothing about Godzilla Minus One at all other than that I was wrong and that I did change the Rotten Tomatoes score. Uh, I'll put a screenshot up there right now. Look, my score has been changed. I noted that I was wrong and I'm an idiot and that everybody should subscribe to the channel now because I've admitted my mistake. Um, and that's definitely not a doctored photo. That's real. And I'm the only person that didn't like the film in the world. Uh, now it's 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. If I hit the 10 minute mark, I did my job. Because if you didn't know this, <clears throat> it is April 1st today as of filming and as of putting this out. It is April 1st. If you don't know what April 1st represents, it's April Fool's Day. It's a special day where people get to troll each other and there should be no consequences. There should be no repercussions. There should be no loss of subscribers, no hard feelings, because we're just having fun here. We're just having fun here. Do I think I was wrong about Godzilla Minus One? No, I don't. Am I... Did I rewatch the film? No, I have not, because I don't even know where to find it yet. <laughs> Do I plan on it? I actually do plan on it. I do want my family to watch it. I'm going to sit down with the three of them and we're going to see if my mind will be changed. I really don't think it will though. It is, like I said, the only honest part I had in this whole thing was I think I've only changed my mind on a movie for Castaway and maybe two other times that I can't even remember. I don't know if it's going to happen for this. I, I went with a buddy, Matt, and we, we both didn't really like it. We were waiting for it to end. Sometimes, guys, there's not much of a reason other than it just doesn't work for you. People liked the drama angle. Typically, I like that stuff, but it did not work for me. It was over the top. I found it to be comical in nature. The lead character was not likable. And oh, he wasn't supposed to be likable, people say. Fine. Then I don't need to like this movie because I don't feel like watching this guy be an asshole or go through his trauma, even if it is true to the character. It's not a compelling, interesting movie for me. And then it goes Looney Tunes in the end, and that didn't work. But again, I understand. People love the movie. It's amazing. Whatever. It didn't work for me. And I can be wrong in the eyes of the majority. That's perfectly fine. As a critic, you have to understand you are not always going to be liked for your opinion, and that's how it should be. You shouldn't, it's like being a dad. It's like being a parent. Your kids should be friends with you, but they don't need to like you all the time. You can have days where your kids are upset with you, where they even hate you because you grounded them or took away their phone or had to discipline. If you're a movie critic and you're true to yourself and you have like a rubric that you follow, and you just put it out there, I don't understand how anyone can be like, yep, screw this guy, he's a liar, or he's, he's, he's cheating the system or whatever. No, if I can explain myself and my reasons, that should be enough. And if it still upsets you, then well, you know where you can unsubscribe and unfollow and whatever. And I'm sure you can find someone like Chris Stuckman who's gonna like every movie so you know that you're getting comfort food at the end of the day. And that's not even a knock on Chris Stuckman. He said that he's only reviewing movies he likes. So there you go. That's probably a channel more to your liking. But for everyone else, and again, I didn't gain subscribers for that video, believe it or not, because there are people out there that aren't so 
like hardcore or obsessed with their opinion or think that they're right all the time and they're willing to listen to what someone else has to say. I am perfectly fine and I accept that the review was not for everyone and that it would come off insulting or it's just a shit review. It could have been better for sure. Sometimes I do get emotionally invested in my own thoughts and how I think everyone else is going to react and so I play it up. I, I joke about it. I, I have fun with the source material. I did the same thing with Barbarian, which came out a year or so back. I hated that fucking movie. Most people that reviewed it and talked about it online loved the film. But guess what? A whole lot of people also agreed and hated it too. And they came to my channel and they were in the comments saying it. And so I thought, just like with Godzilla Minus One, we're kind of going to be in the same boat. There's only a few reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Who cares? Those are the early reactions that are typically really positive. Did you know that Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey was at 100% after seven reviews came in? Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2, I should say. It's because those early reviews are usually bullshit. And they're from people that are in favor with the studio or their shills or they got a gift bag, a poo box, if you will, which that's a true thing. Those were handed out. And they're going to give a more positive review overall. And that's all it takes. And so, no, I haven't changed my score on Rotten Tomatoes. No, I have not changed my opinion yet. Is it possible I will down the road? Very unlikely, but it could happen when I watch the movie again. Because, I, again, I don't like being different from what everyone else thinks. I don't like going against my subscribers when it comes to opinions. Although, apparently, some disagree with me like 50% of the time or more. I, I find that hard to believe. I also think... People don't watch all the video reviews. They only see the big ones or the ones that appeal to them. And that's that's fine. That's understandable. But then they'll come in my comments later and say, do you like anything? Or you don't like anything that comes out anymore, even though they avoided watching 60% of my reviews <laughs> on movies I probably did like. Because I always then have to like look back and go, did I, have I been really negative lately? It's possible. I've been watching a ton of shit. But I also know I've seen a, a couple that I've liked. And then I look back and go, oh yeah, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. Didn't like that one. It's almost always even. Sometimes it's even more positive. But ranting aside, meandering aside, the point of this video is it's April Fool's, fam. So I'm having fun here because that's what we do on this channel. We have fun. Godzilla Minus One might be for you. It wasn't for me, at least not yet, and that hasn't changed. All right, let me know your thoughts on this. Did you, uh, did you get suckered into thinking I was being sincere? Hopefully I didn't hurt your feelings, and if I did, let's move on. <laughs> let's get past it. Please like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe if you somehow stumbled on this. This is more for my subscribers, but if you randomly came to this video thinking, oh, this guy's going to own up to himself and his, his bullshit taste. I, I apologize. That's not happening yet. But you can also stick around. So subscribe, like the video, share, do whatever you want. And just note there is a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. This is a one-man operation. It's a lot of work. It's a second job. Um, I love doing it, but I would also love the support over there. There's a $1 tier even that gives you access to 300 exclusive videos. I also have... Uh, tiers that give you exclusive videos that are new. I got a new vlog coming out each month for gold members. If you are a platinum member for 20 bucks a month, you get two vlogs a month. If you are a mithril member, you get three vlogs a month. You can kind of see where this is going. Lastly, since you're here still, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. It's actually a rebirthing of an old channel. I had Adam Olinger rebranded Adam Does Rants. I have one video up there so far. One video, it's about smartphones, people on their phones and how they're rude pricks in public. That channel, Adam Does Rants, is everything non-movie related. There might be a tiny bit of spillover in the rant department, but for the most part, it's gonna be a very like fun observational rants, like public bathrooms are disgusting or not getting a straw in your bag at Taco Bell, things like that, that not religion, not political, things we can all come together and agree with because there's enough divisiveness out there. Let's come together and just agree that some things suck, typically first world problem issues, and we can have a laugh about it. Okay, that's all I got. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.